Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. I'm glad you could be with us today. We're just having fun here at the studio. Uh, welcome. Glad you can join us today. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. I always appreciate you guys spending time with us. Uh, this is our podcast. You're in our podcast studio here. We have radio studio. We have podcast studio. We have a lot of studios. Uh, if you're new to the show, the way this works is I talk for 24 minutes. You, whatever platform you're on, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitch, uh, YouTube, uh, you can type in any health questions you might have. At the 24-minute break, I will take a break, uh, Garrett and John, my producers, will read me the questions. I will answer your health questions for you. Then I do another 24-minute segment. So that's how it's done. Uh, if you're new to the show, you're going to learn that real fast because it's not really hard. It's hard, not hard to figure out. Join at 24 minutes. Uh, all you have to do is... Uh, you know, type in your questions. If you're listening live, put in hashtag live for me right now. If you're listening on a replay, put in hashtag replay. I appreciate that. So I am ready to go whenever you are, Garrett. Yes? All right, here we go. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am very happy you're here today. We're going to talk today about a really cool topic. We're going to talk about cholesterol. Hey, wow, you are really exciting. It's cholesterol. No, there's a lot of research out that is bucking the original hypothesis that came up about cholesterol. And I want to explain to you what cholesterol is all about and why cholesterol is not bad. In fact, cholesterol is absolutely necessary for you to th survive and thrive. It produces your sex hormones. It makes your brain work. It, it produces all your hormones. It's necessary for cell function. So important to have cholesterol. It's the other things around the cholesterol that are causing the problems. So the cholesterol itself has been vilified uh, for years, it's not the problem. It's everything else that causes the cholesterol to be a bad guy. It instigates it. I remember when I was young, my mother didn't want me hanging out with certain people because they were instigators. Well, it's the things that instigate the cholesterol that cause the problems. And so this is really important for you to understand. If you have high blood pressure, heart disease, uh, diabetes, obesity, liver issues, all this is going to come into play today. So you definitely want to tune into this one and share it with your friends, of course, too, because this is a very hot topic. So let's take a look at an alternative approach to cholesterol. Contrary to the saturated fat cholesterol theory, the most significant risks of cardiovascular disease is not high cholesterol. It's insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, chronic inflammation, and the things that cause that that cause the cholesterol to what's called oxidize, and then it becomes a bad guy. And I'll explain that as we go through today. The damage to the interior layers of the arteries that cause the cholesterol plaque to build up can also be induced by elevated blood sugar, smoking, stress, high blood pressure. And so the cholesterol itself on its own is not bad. It's what the cholesterol does when it's around the other instigators. And this is why I want you to understand this, because lowering your cholesterol unto itself may not be the answer to your health problems. Wow, that's a heavy-duty statement. So what happens is, think of your arteries as, a, as a, a sewer pipe. And if the sewer pipe is empty, everything flows through really easily. If the sewer pipe starts to get clogged up and starts to build up junk in the sewer pipe, the water doesn't flow as freely through it. Well, cholesterol can build up plaque in your arteries, and that can cause a problem. But the cholesterol itself won't just build up plaque if it's floating around by itself. It ha something has to happen to it. So there was a documentary a while ago. It's called The Heart of the Matter. And in the 1950s, the saturated fat cholesterol theory uh, was presented. And it was interesting because what it said was it showed a perfect correlation between cardiovascular disease and dietary consumption of fat in several prominent Western countries. So they took a bunch of different countries and said, yeah, the more fat you eat, the worse it is. And to a point, yes, but I'm going to explain why. There was just one problem with the research that this came out in the 50s. It withheld data from 16 different countries. So some countries had positive data. Well, that wasn't included in the research. And that's one of the problems with research. Many times when it comes to research, they always say, follow the money. You know, who paid for the research? And that's why we always want to look for double-blind studies. We want to look for studies that are not funded by a person who has a vested interest. For example, if a cereal company is funding a, a research on how good sugar is for you, you always got to look at that. And then I look to, like to look at what's called meta-analysis. So I do a study, and it says this. And Garrett does a study, and it says that. And John does a study, and it says something else. Well, we take all the studies out there. We put them together, and we say, okay, what do most of the studies come up with? Because you're less likely to be biased when you put a bunch of different studies together. And that's kind of a big issue. There's people out, researchers get paid. 
They make their living on research. And I'm, hey, it's capitalism, man. But I want you to understand what's going on so you can make better decisions. People come to me all the time. And they say, well, Dr. Joe, if margarine, we're going to talk about margarine in a second, is so bad for the heart, why is it still on the market? I'm not a politician. I don't make the rules. I just tell you what the science says, and then you can decide what to do with it. And I'll give you alternatives. It's very simple. What you do with that information, totally up to you. So a couple of scientific studies confirmed that the, the research was that the high-fat diets led to heart disease. And the tenacity of this theory has resulted in a lot of bad advice and a lot of people doing the wrong thing when it comes to health. So let's talk about margarine. Now's a good time. One of the worst examples of switching from saturated fats to something that's less uh, conducive to heart disease, let's say margarine, um, that came out. Now, years ago, gosh, way, way, way back, 20, 30 years ago or something like that, I remember I was doing a lecture, and I said margarine is a hydrogenated oil, and hydrogenated oil leads to heart the arteries and heart disease. And my mother, God, I miss her, but she agreed with most of what I said, but she did challenge me, which was good. And I made that statement in a, in a talk I was giving. And a couple of weeks later on CNN, there came out a report that says margarine is probably the number one cause of heart disease in the country. So my mother calls me up and she says, I heard this story on CNN. And you just talked about that a few weeks ago. She said, I'm not sure if you're a nut or a prophet. I haven't quite figured it out yet. And I kind of smiled. What a compliment from my mother. I said, Mom, probably a little bit of both. But all I do is look at the research and say, okay, this makes sense, and this doesn't make sense. So the whole thing, is that there was a, a cardiologist, Dr. Stephen Sinatra. Uh, he said when you switch to margarine and other what's called double-bonded trans fats, double-bonded is how the molecules bind to each other, also called polyunsaturated fats or omega-6 fatty acids, you're putting your health at risk. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a whole show on omega-6 fatty acids and how dangerous they are, and how they oxidize low-density lipoproteins, and they stick to the artery walls. And so, yeah, we, this is not an unheard of thing. And the da damage is this. If I eat, let's say, sugar, my body processes the sugar, it's done. If I eat things like polyunsaturated fats, omega-6 fatty acids, and they're oxidized, they're hydrogenated, and again, these are just chemical names that we do to these bad oils, they get into the cells, and the cells actually use them to create the wall of the cell. Okay, the cell walls are made of lipoprotein layers. Lipo meaning fat, protein meaning protein. So it builds this lipoprotein layer, and that lipoprotein layer allows nutrients in, allows waste products out. It's a gateway. So if you have, let's call them cheap fats, bad fats, the gateway isn't going to work as well as it should. And so you're not going to pass out the waste products and absorb nutrients like you're supposed to. So if you only have bad fats, the cell walls need fat. If you're only giving them bad fats, it's going to cause problems. And then when you, the low-density lipoproteins oxidize or the hydrogenated oils or the omega-6 oxidize, that means they go rancid. They go bad. They can then damage the mitochondria in your cell. And the mitochondria in the cell produces energy. And so it's really important. This mitochondria is doing its job. It keeps you young, but it also produces energy. And so one of the things, and I'll go off on a tangent here for a second, is I've been doing a lot of research into long COVID. People that have had COVID and are having symptoms months and years later. And one of the problems we're finding is fatigue. Think about this. If you're tired all the time and you had COVID, think how you felt before you had COVID. Chances are, you may not have felt as tired as you are. And it could be due to long COVID. And again, the research is still being gathered on this. It's a very new situation. But we're finding that the COVID virus can attack the mitochondria and make the mitochondria weak. And if the cell is weaker, the virus is able to replicate more efficiently. If the cell's strong, it can fight off the virus. So it's a way of the COVID of making your body weaker so that it can reproduce itself. But if you're doing omega-6 fatty acids, hydrogenated oils, polyunsaturated fats, they are damaging the mitochondria as well. So if you have weak mitochondria, let's say it's a viral in infection or a viral attack, and you're doing these polyunsaturated fats, you don't really stand much of a good chance of getting healthy, do you? 
So I really want you to consider that that whole thing about polyunsaturated fats was very wrong. Now, these fats, basic ingredients in processed foods, snack foods, they go rancid, they oxidize, and they create free radicals. Free radicals are like Pac-Man. Pac-Man eats through things, waka, 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 and it's eating through things. And so it can damage the cells in the mitochondria and the cell wall. And these chemical reactions produce inflammation. Now, when you have inflammation in the artery walls, the body says, uh-oh, something's wrong. I've got to make this artery wall stronger so that it doesn't burst. So the body, and this is a simple, simplified version of it, it lays down cholesterol, kind of like a scab or concrete, and fixes up the artery walls to make it thicker and stronger. Well, the downside is the artery walls now lose their flexibility. They can't expand and contract like they used to. And the, the, the opening in the artery gets smaller, and so blood can't get through it as much. And so that can raise the blood pressure because that opening is narrower. And blood pressure puts stress on the artery walls, which causes the body to lay down more cholesterol. So my Elvis Presley quote, you're caught in a trap. And so it becomes a cycle. One thing leads to another, to another, to another, and so now you've got problems. So high blood pressure can lead to hardening of the arteries as well because it stresses the artery walls and it lays down cholesterol. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So Dr. Sinatra said, adding to the damage of the omega-6, what you have to do is two things. Number one, you have to cut out or cut back on your omega-6 fatty acids. Uh, I post on social media. I post every day on social media. And I posted something a while ago on peanut butter. I said three bad foods that are surprisingly bad for you. And I said peanut butter, fruit juices, and artificial sweetener. And the fruit juice because it doesn't have fiber and the artificial sweetener because of neurological issues that it causes. And I posted about peanut butter. And you would have thought I smacked somebody's kid. People got up in arms. They defended their peanut butter. I've been eating peanut butter all my life. My grandfather ate peanut butter. Listen, don't shoot the messenger. Peanut butter is high in omega-6 fatty acids. Then we, or peanuts, we roast the peanuts. It causes more damage to the oils. And so it's not the best choice. So we can take more omega-3 fatty acids, which by the way, you should be doing. Omega-3 fatty acids help combat the damage from the omega-6s. It kind of blocks the receptor sites. You can't absorb the omega-6s. But you can't just do more omega-3s. You have to cut down on the omega-6s as well. And so cutting out those omega-6 fatty acids. So where do we find these bad oils that can cause the inflammation, that can cause the body to, be, cause, cause the body to lay down cholesterol? Well, they're in vegetable oils or seed oils, cotton seed oil, corn, uh, corn seed oil, uh, soybean oil, uh, 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 canola oil. Canola comes from a rapini seed. So the seed oils, the vegetable oils, are the ones you really want to avoid, the polyunsaturated fats. Because years ago, we said saturated fat's bad. So polyunsaturated fats, multiple less saturation, good. Well, didn't work that way. Turns out the research was flawed, and people went to these polyunsaturated fats. They went to margarines instead of butters, and it caused problems. Now, I'm not a fan of butter, but not because of the saturated fat. I'm because of the saturated fat and other things. So... Just be careful with these vegetable oils. I would say don't use them ever because you're going to get plenty of omega-6 fatty acids even if you're eating an ultimate perfect diet. Mo the ideal scenario would be one omega-3 to one omega-6. That would be the ideal scenario, omega-3 molecule to omega-6. If you go to five omega-6s to one omega-3, all right, that's still okay. Many of you, until you listen to this show, have 15, 20, 30 omega-6s to one omega-3. You are just setting yourself up for disaster, and it's unfortunate. So what I told the people when I talked about the peanut butter, I said, listen, don't shoot the messenger. I'm giving you the scientific research. What you do with that information is totally up to you, but I'm telling you with facts. So don't think, well, just because I always did it, it's good. And also the peanuts way back when were different than they are now, too. We didn't use a lot of pesticides. Um, and uh, herbicides and uh, fungicides because the fungus grows on the peanuts called mycotoxins. So it was a different world. So fats, back to the fats, basic ingredients for most processed foods. You want to get more omega-6 fatty acids, omega-3s, I'm sorry. Where do you get omega-3 fatty acids? Well, you can get them from flax seeds. You can get them from walnuts. You can get small amounts in romaine lettuce even. 
But I take a supplement. I take an algae omega-3 fatty acid every day. Now, there's three types of omega-3 fatty acids that can counteract the omega-6 fatty acids, which cause the inflammation, which cause the body to lay down the cholesterol. You can get it from fish oil. I'm not a big fan. Many times it's rancid. Uh, many times it's contaminated with mercury. There are some good ones out there, but it has to be converted into what's called a phospholipid form. Krill oil is already in the phospholipid form, and it's an omega-3. So of fish or krill, krill's a better choice. It's even better for the environment if you want to go that direction. But algae oil is the purest form. Algae oil is the one, the fish and the krill eat the algae to get the omega-3s. So algae oil is, my, in my opinion, the purest form of omega-3 fatty acids. That's the one I take every day. And I, my, I, the bottle says take one a day. I take actually two a day. And it helps with inflammation. It helps with brain function. It helps with the immune system. It does so many different things. And it's what's called an essential fatty acid which means you have to get it from an outside source. So I take an algae omega-3. The one I take is on my website, drjoe.com. And if you just go to drjoe.com, click on the store link, and it'll bring you to all our supplements. But that's a great source of omega-3. We also put omega-3 in Dr. Joe's Super Greens. We have chlorella and spirulina, and we put uh, omega-3s in that as well. Um, and that's another source of omega-3 that I take every day. So the minimum supplements I think everybody should be taking would be, of course, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, which is the minimum supplement everybody should take. It's over 72 different nutrients, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin. It has sea vegetables in it for iodine. Almost everybody is deficient in iodine. And so that's that. And Super Greens has chlorella and spirulina and, and sea vegetables to detoxify the liver. I take a scoop of each every day. I can't imagine why you're not doing it. It's relatively inexpensive. It tastes great. It's a powder, so you just shake it up. You say, oh, I can't swallow pills. It's in a powder form. Shake it up, some coconut milk, almond milk. This morning, I put three frozen figs, half a frozen banana, my super greens, my essential source, and my, and my vitamin D. I put vitamin D supplements in there as well. And that's what I had as my breakfast this morning. That's what you should be having for breakfast every day, my opinion. So all the supplements we talk about, Super Green Essential Source, Omega-3, we talked about the vitamin D, all on the website, drjoe.com in the store section. So I want to keep talking about what this alternative look at cholesterol and why cholesterol itself is not necessarily bad. So David Sullivan, associate professor and lipid expert. He's a fat expert at the Royal Prince Al Alfred uh, Hospital in Sydney, Australia. I don't know how you become a fat expert, but he is. Don't replace saturated fats with carbohydrates because that increases obesity, and it can actually make you more hungry. So there was a craze a while ago. It's kind of still around, but not as bad, uh, called uh, fat-free foods, fat-free cookies, fat-free cakes. Oh, my gosh, this is great. It's fat-free. I'm going to eat this instead. Well, you're replacing a bad fat with bad sugar. And what happens is if you have too much sugar, you release a lot of insulin in the body. Insulin is released from the pancreas when you eat sugar. And insulin goes to the cells in the body and opens it up. It's like a key. Opens up the cell and lets the sugar in. So if you have a lot of sugar, you need more insulin to open up the cells to let the sugar in. So if you have too much insulin, the cells stop using the insulin properly, and it becomes insulin resistant. The cells say, I'm not going to listen to you, insulin. I can't let any more sugar in. I'm going to get all gunked up. So what happens then is the sugar keeps floating around in the blood. Sugar is an acid. It causes an inflammatory reaction in the blood, which caused the body then to lay down cholesterol to protect and fight the inflammation, and there's your hardening of the arteries and your heart disease. So don't switch to these fat-free substitutes, these sugars. That they're, they're, they're just junk, too. Now, a lot of marketers of processed foods, uh, they add refined sugar, and they improve taste, and they still call it low-fat. Any meal or snack and carbohydrates like fructose, refined grains, creates a quick rise in glucose. That raises the insulin to compensate. And the high sugar only increases the risk of heart disease. So it's a little tricky. So uh, some of you are confused. I know that. Bottom line is this. The more processed the food is, the worse it is. S polyunsaturated fats, uh, again, the canola oil, cottonseed oil, corn, corn oil, uh, soybean oil, stay away from them at all costs. Blended vegetable oils, stay away from them at all costs. Oils that would be better choices, coconut oil extra virgin coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil. But here's the thing. You shouldn't be using a lot of extra oil anyway. You should be getting it from your foods. So in our office, every patient that comes in, we do a nutrition evaluation on. 
And we have five doctors and myself, so six doctors, four offices, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. But most people come to us not for nutrition. I had several come in last week just for nutrition. But they come first for pain. And the reason is that our office, I mean, I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, traumatic brain injuries. I got a pretty good resume. And patients come to us with neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, um, car accidents, got a lot of car accidents, sports injuries, golf injuries. And so we try to treat the cause of their pain and not just treat the symptoms. But my approach is this. You can't treat the cause of the pain if you're not addressing the nutrition along with the structure. You can have the best surgeon in the world. You have the best cardiologist in the world. And they can do a good job, but if you keep putting bad chemicals in your body, you're, you're fighting a losing battle. So every case that comes in, yes, we're really good at pain. Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, sciatica, numbness, tingling, muscle weakness, shoulder, uh, weak, uh, shoulder uh, grinding. My team of doctors and I are really good at that fixing that naturally without drugs and surgery. We can do chiropractic. We can do something called PRP. PRP is platelet-rich plasma. We can take your blood, take out the growth factors in your blood, and re-inject it back into your body. Amazing results with arthritic knees, arthritic shoulders, uh, foot pain, uh, uh, fibromyalgia. Great results with that. And then we add the chiropractic care to it, and then we add the nutrition to it. So it's a multi-phase approach, and let me tell you, I can't imagine practicing healthcare any other way. Because if you're just doing, if just doing drugs, well, you're just treating the symptom. I am not against drugs, but you got to also get the body healthy along with it. We treat a lot of patients that are under chemotherapy. We do the chiropractic and nutrition with it. We have people that have heart, heart disease. I had a patient come in the other day, and he was really tired. His legs were numb. We took an x-ray. His arteries were all clogged up. And he said, well, as I go to a cardiologist. He never checked. He never checked his lower body. He kept checking his heart. Checked his lower body, sent him back to the cardiologist. Cardiologist said, wow, you, you probably saved your life. Because if any of that plaque broke off and went to your heart, you could have a heart attack. Brain would be a stroke. And I felt bad that nobody found this on this guy before. And it took us 10 minutes to find. So if you're serious about wanting to get well, whatever your situation is, go to our website, drjoe.com. You can book an appointment to come see us. We can do virtual appointments or we can do in person. DrJoe.com in the Atlanta area. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Normally, the first visit in, uh, in person is $940. We've reduced that for my listeners to $299. That's exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation. We would love to be your doctors. And we can do a nutrition workup. We can find out what you're doing. I can't take you off your medication, but I can give you advice to get healthier, so perhaps you don't need the medication. That's my approach. I'm not here to take you off meds or tell you not to have surgery. I'm here to get you well enough. So maybe, just maybe, you won't need that. So drjoe.com, all the supplements are there too. If you have any questions, send it to me through the website, drjoe.com. I'm happy to answer them for you. Follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Twitch. We post every single day. We give you one-minute health tips every single day, absolutely free, at Dr. Joe Esposito. Make sure you do that. But the website, drjoe.com, great source of information. If you're a podcast junkie, we do our podcast, at least we post twice a week, uh, Dr. Joe for the health of it on your podcast service. Dr. Joe for the health of it. So several experts dispute this whole saturated fat theory based on a lot of clinical experience. One of them, Dr. Rita Redberg, she's a cardiologist who practices at the University of California, San Francisco. She says, cholesterol is just a number. Only one factor in heart disease along with general lifestyle. So once again, we talked earlier about a sewer pipe. If the sewer pipe is clean, you can have a lot of junk flowing through it, and it doesn't cause problems. When the sewer pipe gets clogged up, that's when you have a problem. And so we want to keep the inflammation in the body to a minimum. We want to keep the free radical damage, these little molecules that attack you like Pac-Man, eating through things. We want to keep that to a minimum. Then there really isn't much of a need for the body to lay down cholesterol in the artery walls to protect the artery walls because the artery walls don't need protecting. If you have high blood pressure, get to the cause of the high blood pressure. It could be that your digestive system is wacky, and that affects the vagus nerve, and the vagus nerve affects how the blood, blood pressure goes. So if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, let's try to fix the digestive system so that we take the stress off the vagus nerve so that the vagus nerve doesn't cause the heart to beat faster to raise the blood pressure, which puts stress on the artery walls, 
which caused the cholesterol to get laid down. Isn't it fun? I like this. I'm fun being a, an investigator. Folks, uh, if you have any questions, again, my website, very simple, drjoedrjoe.com. We'll be right back. Okay. Which, uh, which omega-3 do you take every day? I take Dr. Joe's a Vegan Omega-3. It's on the website, drjoe.com. It's an algae oil. I can't imagine why the whole world... I, if I was Grand Poo Body Universe, I'd lay down some rules. And one of the rules would be you have to take Super Greens and Essential Source every day, and you have to take Omega-3 fatty acids every day. What else? For children, too. For bread... What is a better alternative to butter or margarine? Uh, olive oil, extra virgin organic olive oil. Now, here's the thing. About 80% of the olive oil in this country, 70 80% all around the world, is fake. It's diluted with other oils. There's not enough, and I read this, and I don't know if it's true, there's not enough olive trees in the world to produce all the olive oil that we have. So you, what you want to do is get the olive oil, put it in the refrigerator when you buy it. The next morning, look at the olive oil. If it's cloudy, you probably have a good product. If it's not cloudy, it's probably cut. And about 70% or more of the olive oil in this country is cut. So if you're going to do an oil for that, I'd say olive oil. But you shouldn't be eating the bread either. So, <laughs> um, What are your thoughts on apple butter? Great. As long as it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it, I love it. Mm -hmm. And what should I do if someone has an allergy to flax seeds, fish products, and all deep sea products? I would try the algae oil. The algae oil is probably going to be better, um, although it is a sea product. Um, if, if not, uh, then we have to start looking at a, you can do vegan omega-3s um, that aren't, aren't from that. You can get it from uh, macadamia nuts, walnuts, uh, uh, romaine lettuce. These are all mild sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Not the best source, but they're better sources. I would try the algae oil, though, and see how you do with it. That's it so far? That's easy. What do you want, Christine? We're in the middle of very important. We're live on the air right now. No, we're not. No. <laughs> Go ahead. One of my highly qualified staff members there. All right. Where was I? All right. All right. We'll pick up there. Go there. Good. All right. Ready for round two? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe, thanks for being with me today. What we're talking about today is cholesterol and a very different look at cholesterol. You're going to be surprised that I'm going to tell you that cholesterol is not bad. Cholesterol can actually be very important, is very important for your survival. It's what other things that interact that cause the cholesterol to become bad. It's a good guy until it's instigated, until it's poked a little bit, poking the bear, and then it becomes a bad guy. So we want to remove all the bad guys around the cholesterol, and then the cholesterol itself can be utilized for what it's supposed to be used for, building hormones, building cell walls, uh, testosterone, estrogen. You need this cholesterol to build your sex hormones along with that you have cholesterol. And you don't want cholesterol too low. That can actually be a problem. So we kind of said earlier that there was a, a Dr. Rita Redberg, and she is or was a cardiologist at the University of uh, California, San Francisco, and she said this, and I love this statement, cholesterol is just a number. Only one factor in heart disease along with the other things and general lifestyle that cause the problems. So if you just happen to tune in now, what happens is cholesterol is floating around in your blood, right? It's doing its thing, going out to make hormones. And then if you irritate the artery walls, high blood pressure, smoking, high sugar diet, stress, these things, alcohol can irritate the lining of the artery walls. When the artery wall line, lining gets irritated, the body says, uh-oh, I'm getting like a little tear in the artery wall. I can't have the artery wall burst. It'll, it'll die. And again, this is a very simplified version. So the body takes cholesterol and fills in those little tears and the little inf inflamed areas to protect that artery, to make it stronger. When the process, it makes it more narrow. And as it gets narrower, the blood has, doesn't have as big a hole to flow through. And so the pressure goes up. The more pressure on the artery walls, the body says, ooh, that's a lot of pressure. I better make these arteries stronger. Lays down cholesterol. So cholesterol unto itself is not a bad guy. And lowering the cholesterol without treating the other cofactors, I don't think is the best approach. Because the cholesterol is not the problem, it's the symptom. 
The cause is what you're doing to the body, the free radicals, the irritating artery walls, the smoking, the pressure, things like that. That's really where the problems come in. So just lowering your cholesterol, meh. I don't think it's going to give you all of the best bang for your buck. It's a good idea, but it's not going to be the best bang for your buck. Now, if you take statin drugs, and again, I'm not saying don't take drugs. Please understand that. Statin drugs are produced in the liver. The same enzyme that produces cholesterol in your liver also produces something called coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. CoQ10 is necessary to make the mitochondria, that's a part of the cell, to generate electricity and give the cell energy and give you energy. So a lot of people that come to see us that are on statin drugs are tired all the time. They're wiped out. And so we simply get them on a CoQ10 supplement, and suddenly they start feeling better again because now the mitochondria has co coenzyme Q10 to start functioning again. Because you're not, produce, you're not producing it as much when you take statin drugs. So again, don't stop taking your statin drugs. I would add the CoQ10. You can ask your cardiologist or your doctor about it. I mean, I'm sure they'll say yes. If they understand biochemistry, they'll understand and say yes, absolutely. But really important to do that. Now, that being said, what can we do to get your cholesterol levels down? Because cholesterol is too high. And usually, not always, usually the body produces more cholesterol because it needs more cholesterol. Why? To protect the artery walls so, and to produce hormones. So we said Dr. Sinatra, he was a cardiologist. I think he passed away recently. Uh, he believed a saturated fat theory, that saturated fat, bad. Uh, and then he looked at the x-rays of those with heart disease. And the angiogram showed, the angiograms are, you know, x-rays of, of the blood vessels, showed both high and low levels of plaque-filled arteries. And therefore, wasn't really predictive or helpful in deciphering heart disease. Some people had it, some people didn't. Some people ate a lot of saturated fat, some people didn't. Again, the problem isn't the saturated fat, is when the saturated fat gets heated, it changes its molecular structure, and that's when it becomes a toxin to the body. I'm not saying you should eat raw meat. Absolutely. But uh, coconut oil, for example, is a saturated fat. But it's a different type of saturated fat. It's, it, the bonding is different. And so it's easier for the body to process something like coconut oil than it would, say, a steak or butter. So once again, it's not the, the, the cholesterol. It's everything around it. Cholesterol is only harmful when it's oxidized, when it goes bad. That's it. So as long as we keep that cholesterol from going bad or oxidizing, we're in good shape. And we do that by having a healthy lifestyle. By health, having a healthy lifestyle, we will most likely naturally lower our cholesterol. Most people don't have genetically high cholesterol. In fact, one study I read, and I don't remember where I read the study, one in 100 people have genetically high cholesterol. 99 out of 100 can do wonders with diet, exercise, supplementation. So I don't know if you have high cholesterol if you're that one in 100. You might be. Either way, doing the right thing, eating the right foods, taking the right supplements, getting a lot of antioxidants in the body, getting rid of the free radicals, cutting out the saturated fats, the cooked foods, uh, the hydrogenated oils, either way, you're going to win. So you can't, well, I have, my mother had high cholesterol, so do I. Well, your mother also ate, you know, fried uh, beef fat, and so did you. So there could be what I call familial, not genetic. If I grew up in an environment that did certain things, I'm going to have certain reactions. And so you got to consider that too. It may not be genetic. It might be just because of your lifestyle. Stress. You get stressed out. Pressure increases on the artery walls. Body says, uh-oh, got to make those artery walls thicker so they don't burst. And there you, there you go. Now, if that thickening, that plaque that builds up, that's dangerous because not only does it narrow the blood vessel, but if it breaks off and floats up into your brain and then clogs up a blood vessel, a stroke, clogs up a blood vessel in your heart, heart attack. Okay, if it goes to the lungs, pulmonary embolism. So it's all about the lifestyle. And a lot of this, and this is a painful thing to say, folks, you're not going to like me when I say this. Many of your health problems you caused. You did this to yourself. And the nice part is that a lot of them can be reversed or certainly managed. Um, there's a lot of research on heart disease. Um, uh, Dr. McDougall did a lot of research on it. Esselstein did it as well. Uh, Sinatra did it. And they found that heart disease in many times can be stabilized and a lot oftentimes can be reversed. Wow. So you have heart in the arteries and the doctor says you have to have heart surgery. And I agree. I've sent many patients to surgeons right out of this office. 
Okay, they come in my office. I say, you got a problem. You need to go to a cardiologist right now. You got calcification of the abdominal aorta. It's 55 uh, millimeters. You need to get to a cardiologist today. No, I'm fine. I went to my cardiologist six months ago, and he said, come back in a year. You need to go today. And sometimes they'll put them in emergency surgery because they didn't find they didn't realize how bad the placking the artery was. And if the artery gets if, if, if it's cl- too clogged, the pressure gets too big, it can burst. If your artery bursts, especially your abdominal aorta, it's pretty much game over. It's not like we can resuscitate you because you're bleeding internally. So we have to look at that. And many times I'll send people to a cardiologist and they'll say, wow, I had no idea. I never thought to dig this far. So understand that you have to take control of your own health. Well, I went to the doctor and he said, I'm okay, get checked up in a year. Well, if you're eating alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, uh, stress, um, you're, you're not sleeping properly, you're not getting enough movement in your life, not getting enough fiber, bowels aren't moving at least once a day, preferably twice a day, you don't get enough omega-3 fatty acids in your diet, well, it's your fault. A famous man once said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I think you know who that was. Now you know. So now you know. So you have to make a decision. Am I going to do this or not? And it's up to you. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to do it all at once. Don't get scared. Well, Dr. Joe, I can't give up alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener all at once. I can't do it. So I'm not going to do any of it. I know I post on social media and we have well, well over a half million followers in just like five weeks. And um, it's funny because some people say, oh, you're going to die anyway. Eat what you want. Well, that's one approach. You can certainly do that. Uh, it's not the approach I want to do. I don't want to be miserable with tubes coming out of every orifice of my body and somebody having to, uh, you know, take care of me as I'm dying. I want to enjoy life the best I can. And as I'm getting older, I realize that more and more that this is not dress rehearsal. This is the final act, and we've got to be able to do it right. So do these things. And here's the thing. Let's assume I'm wrong. Let's assume you start taking supplements, you start eating right, you have issues with the spine or joints, we get chiropractic care, we do PRP injections, chiropractic care, acoustic wave therapy, and we do all these wonderful things. And you don't see any changes. So what? Go back to the way it used to be. But if I'm right, which I am, then you'll say, that's all I had to do? It really is just that simple? It really is just that simple, folks. It really is not that big a deal. Now, I go to events, I go to parties, I, there's, you know, if I, in the offices where I go, it's the radio station, whatever, and there's, you know, cakes. I just don't eat it. It was funny. I was talking to a friend of mine, Jonathan, the other day, and he said, Dr. Joe, I have to admit, he says, now that I know you, you're a nice guy and I like you. He says, when I first started working here, he says, somebody brought in a cake for something. He says, and I saw you come walking into the studio. He says, and I put a newspaper over the piece of cake I was eating. He says, I felt so guilty. And then somebody else said to me, he said, they said, you know, I always felt guilty when I was around you, but thank you because you made me aware of what I was doing. I, I just eat blindly. I wasn't even paying attention. And you've made me aware of what I'm doing, and I feel so much better. I've lost so much weight. I have so much more energy. My love life improved. My bowels are getting better. The results are there. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So what? You start eating good food. There's a very low risk, high reward to this. That's, that's good if you're gambling and you're not gambling. You're gambling with your health if you don't do it. So cholesterol, we're talking about cholesterol and how it's really not that bad a uh, thing. Cholesterol serves valuable functions in the body and getting rid of it should not be our goal. It's the precursor to a lot of our hormones. Cholesterol protects the cell membranes. It helps digest food. It manufactures vitamin D uh, after exposure to the sun. So when you're out in the sun, UVB rays interact with the skin, interact with cholesterol, and create vitamin D. There's a process that goes on, but that's how it's done. So if you don't have enough cholesterol and you're out in the sun, you can't get enough vitamin D. So it's so important that cholesterol be there. Now let's talk about the LDL and HDLs. HDLs, high-density lipoproteins. That's the good cholesterol. LDLs, bad cholesterol, right? So what happens is if we have high-density lipoproteins, it designates uh, uh, the good cholesterol, and the LDLs are the low cholesterol. So what happens is the lipoproteins don't deposit or remove cholesterol. They don't take cholesterol out of the wall, artery walls and, and, and you know, break down the plaque, and they don't stick it in the walls either. So the LDLs, uh, they, they go out into the world. The HDLs carry it back to the liver and recycle it. 
And so they don't do anything but transport cholesterol. When the cholesterol is floating around and there's damage, that's when the cholesterol is called over to plug the hole that's forming in the artery, to bring down the inflammation that's forming in the artery. So HDLs and LDLs just do their job. And having more of one or the other are related to heart disease, but they're related to it because of the extenuating circumstances that cause you to produce more of the bad cholesterol or the good cholesterol. So stress and damage to artery walls allows that inflammation, the degradation that leads to heart disease. That's why plaque is usually seen in arteries and not veins. So I propose this to you now. Arteries are under a lot of pressure. That's when they, 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 the heart beating, boom, boom, and the arteries are being ex- expended. And right around where the, um, uh, where the branches are, there's more pulsating pressure. And so that's where the plaque is built up because that's a spot. That's a potential weak spot. Veins don't have that kind of pressure unless the vein has to take over for the artery because the arteries are so damaged. I mean, that's, that's the exception. But usually you're going to see placking in the arteries, not so much in the veins. Now, you can see if the veins are weak, um, something called a flebolith. And a flebolith is calcification around the valve in the vein, but that's because the vein is so weak. But anyway, long story there. So what we want to try to do is treat the cause of any health problem, whether it's heart disease, diabetes, cancer, not just treat the symptoms. So if you have heart disease, if you have diabetes, if you have high blood pressure, follow your medical doctor's advice. Absolutely. But I also want you to be proactive and take steps that you can do to keep your body healthy. Again, my goal, and I say this a lot, my goal is not to take you off any medication. My goal is not to have you not have surgery. My goal is to get you well enough so you don't need the medication or the surgery. Sometimes I'm right. Seldom, but it does happen where I, it's too far gone. But isn't it worth a shot? To me, it's, it's a no-brainer. Very high reward, very low risk. The other way around, very high risk. And, you know, sometimes there's a reward to it too. So I'm not saying we shouldn't bring down the blood pressure. Absolutely, we should. But we should find out why we have high blood pressure. We shouldn't, bring down a, we shouldn't not bring down a cholesterol. We should find out why we have high cholesterol. One uh, theory or one hypothesis that's there is that the liver produces cholesterol, sends it out in the body, body uses what it needs, and then recycles the old stuff. And if the recycling bin is filled in the liver, you can't recycle the cholesterol. And so the cholesterol keeps floating around in the blood. And that's why we find that we clean out the liver. We do things like chlorella, which is a, a, it's in our super greens that helps clean out the liver. We do other supplements. I have a list of other supplements, glutathione, other ones that you can take to clean out the liver. Many times we do that, the cholesterol plummets. So again, it's all about the lifestyle. Is it the liver? Is it eating the fruits and vegetables? Is it having more antioxidants? Is it cutting down the free radicals? Is it reducing the stress? It's all a package deal. And the nice part is it's not just about cholesterol. It's about your overall health. There's no special diet that only applies to high blood pressure, only applies to cholesterol, only applies to heart disease, only applies to cancer. It's all the same process. And that's what makes it so easy. Anybody you talk to, any doctor you talk to, whatever your health condition is, what do they recommend? Eat more fruits and vegetables, right? Stay away from the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener. I don't like the fact that people say, well, everything in moderation. If I'm having a health issue, I want that health issue resolved immediately. I don't want to have moderation. I want to get to my, my wellness as quickly as I possibly can. And so, and you have control of that. The nice part is you have control over what goes in your mouth. We talked about the other day, you can't outrun your fork. What's more important, exercise or diet? You can't outrun your fork. You can work out and be a, a workout fiend, gym rat. But if you're eating bad foods, these things happen. The heart disease, the diabetes, the cancer, in many cases. So, so more problems with the LDL uh, cholesterol theory. LDL, low-dense lipoproteins, uh, in order for it to be correct, low-dense lipoproteins have to travel through the lining of the artery and get into what's called the endothelial. It's a lower level, not the outside layer or the inside layer of the artery. It's the middle layer. There's no way for low-dense lipoproteins to do that. They, they can't, there's no transport mechanism to bring them into the, into the arteries that way. So that's another reason why LDLs by themselves are not bad. It's when they 
when there's irritation and the body lays down the, uh, the, the cholesterol to protect it. So let's talk about some dietary issues, some things you should do to, to avoid because these are the bad fats. The bad fats oxidize. These are the ones that cause the irritation. So a couple of foods. I'm not a fan of eggs. Okay, we know that if you eat more eggs, your cholesterol will probably go up. There's tons of studies on that. Chicken. Chicken has about the same cholesterol as red meat. Of course, red meat. Cheeses, sausages, hot dogs, bacon, ribs. Those are some of the worst. The processed meats are the worst because they use nitrates and they heat it. It creates nitrosamines, which are known carcinogens, and we can go on and on. Just stay away from the processed meats. Uh, fish. People say, what about fish, Dr. Joe? I'm not a big fan of fish. I haven't had any animal products personally in 38 years. If there was a better way to eat, and I've been researching for 40 years now, if there was a better way to eat and take care of my body, I'd be doing it. It's just that simple. If meatball sandwiches were better for me than, I don't know, broccoli, I'd be eating meatball sandwiches. I'm not biased here. I just know the research, and the research speaks for itself. And I see it in practice, too. And not only do I have, the, I, I have a, uh, imperial research, things that are proven, but I also have life, ex- life experience. I've coached tens of thousands of people on diet through radio, through television, through my books, through lectures. And the ones that follow my advice, in fact, I can say this, I've never had anyone follow my advice in nutrition and say, I wish I never did that. Never. It's a pretty good rate. Uh, so grain-based desserts, a lot of breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, dairy, p- um, pizza, Mexican mixed dishes with a lot of corn, fried corn things, cold cuts, re- uh, milk, pork, shrimp. It's not hard. For- Listen, if you don't know what to eat, I'm almost out of time. If you don't know what to eat, go to my website, drjoe.com, and type in, so what can I eat? So all you have to do is, so what can I eat? And listen to that. It's about 45 minutes of me telling you what to eat. It's very simple. It's free. My website, by the way, absolutely free. We have over 4,000 hours of, of content there. So type in a search bar what you're looking for. It's great. All the supplements we talked about, the super greens, the essential source, nitric oxide, didn't even talk about that. Nitric oxide opens up the blood vessels. I take it every day. If you have high or normal blood pressure, I think you should too. If you don't have high blood pressure, if you have low blood pressure, don't take it. But all the supplements are there. Best thing you can do, make an appointment to come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Just go to drjoe.com, drjoe.com. You can book it right online. You can call us. We can do virtual appointments. When you book it, just say it's going to be, well, my staff will call you when you book it and tell them it's a virtual appointment, and we can do that as well. Normally, an in, in-house uh, live visit is normally $940. We've reduced that to $299. We're making it affordable so you can get checked out to see if what you have is something that hopefully we can help. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation. All of that, and then if we do find something we need, we think uh, we can help, we're going to tell you. this. If you work on it, hopefully this is the results. If you don't work on it, this is probably the results, and it's, you, it's never good. So drjoe.com, we'd love to be your doctor. So just go there. Any questions about your insurance? We have cash patients. If you're ever in a car accident, please, if the car is damaged, you're damaged. I've never seen it any other way. So get to see us immediately. As soon as you're in the accident, call us. Don't fall for scam lawyers calling you and doctors calling you. Go see. No one is ever going to call you to tell you to go to a doctor or a lawyer. That's a scam. Don't fall for that scam. I'm exposing those scammer, scam artists. So the website, drjoe.com, great source of information. Making an appointment is really going to be the best thing you can do so we can customize a plan. Everything I teach you on my podcast, my radio shows, my TV shows, everything I teach you is general information. And it works in most cases. I want to customize a plan specifically for you, your friends, and your family. So drjoe.com. The minimum supplements I would recommend is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I would recommend omega-3 fatty acids as well. I take them every day. You should too. And then glutathione is good for the liver. Uh, we take digestive enzymes. If I eat a cooked meal, I take digestive enzymes because at my age, I just don't digest like I used to. This is what it is. And so I want to enhance that by taking natural plant-based digestive enzymes. So the pl- protocol is pretty simple. And the protocol is usually very cheap. And the outcome is usually amazing. Not always, but usually. If you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. And we post at least two podcasts a week, sometimes more. 
And you need to follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito, because we, uh, we post every single day. Uh, WSB Radio also carries our posts as well, so you can follow them, WSB Radio, on social media. And one-minute tips. So if this is too much for you, if you can't handle you know, 20 minutes of information, one-minute tips every day. I can't imagine why you're not. And it's free. At Dr. Joe Esposito, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Twitch, we're everywhere. So avoiding the foods, the toxic oils are going to be the key. The vegetable oils, the seed oils, uh, the foods that have a lot of bad fats in them. Uh, I, again, the meat, the dairy products, uh, when you heat those fats, they become uh, dangerous. And then eating more foods that are high in quality, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds. People say, well, Dr. Joe, what do you eat? So for breakfast, I have Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source every day. It's the first thing I have first thing in the morning. Sometimes I put a frozen banana in it. Um, I had a ton of figs on my fig tree this year, so I put a couple of frozen figs in there too. This way they last longer. Figs go bad pretty quickly. Um, so I start with that and usually a couple of pieces of fruit. Then if I start getting hungry around 10 o'clock, which I usually do, um, I'll have maybe a handful of nuts or seeds. Uh, again, raw. Try to avoid the, the roasting because that changes the oils as well. Uh, lunch is almost always some type of salad, tomato salad, regular salads. Um, first book I ever wrote, Eating Right for the Health of It, we have a bunch of recipes in here for salad dressings, real simple, easy things. Uh, folks, I'm almost out of time. If you have any questions, send them to me through my website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com, a little bot pops up, just send me any questions you have. Book an appointment to come see us. That's the most important thing you can do, drjoe.com. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. All right. Sticking their nose in there. All right. Garrett? How do you, do you have? lower triglycerides? Lower triglycerides. Okay, the way triglycerides happen is this. You eat sugar. Breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. The sugar converts into glucose and is utilized, or is glucose, and is utilized in the cells. If you have too much glucose floating around in the blood, the body says, I got to get this glucose out of here because it's an acid and it can irritate the lining of the artery walls and cause cholesterol to lay down. So the body stores the glucose in something called glycogen. Glycogen is in the blood vessels, it's in the liver, it's in the muscles, and that's your reserve tank of energy. So you use up all the food that you ate, you still, you're not going to pass out, you turn to glycogen. Once all the glycogen stores are filled up, the body says, I got to get this sugar out of the blood. It's dangerous. So it converts it into triglycerides, which then are stored as fat. That's how we convert sugar into fat. So the way you lower your triglycerides is lower your net carbohydrates. So breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, rice, cut them out. Now, if you're eating something like fruit, not a problem. <clears throat> That's okay. But you got to get more fiber in a diet and less processed carbohydrates. That's how you lower your triglycerides. Is it true that flaxseed is only a fiber when it is ground to release the good stuff? Yes. But I want you to grind it right before you eat it. Because if you get it pre-ground, it starts to oxidize. The oils go bad. So if you swallow flax seeds whole, they pass right through you. When you grind them up, that's when they swell up with water and act well. So grind them and eat them right away. Um, in that same line of questioning, uh, what is the healthiest type of bread? <laughs> Have we ever given a lecture where that question hasn't come up? <laughs> there is no good bread is the bottom line. If you're going to do bread, I would say do gluten-free because wheat has the gluten in it, which irritates the bowels and can affect the immune system. Uh, I would say gluten-free. The good news about gluten-free is this. It doesn't taste good. So you're going to eat a lot less. Now, I'm Italian. I love Italian bread. I'm th who doesn't love Italian bread, right? So there really isn't a good bread. I'm sorry. You can do a whole grain, maybe, but I'm just, I, I, wish, I wish I had a better answer for you, but I don't. So what else? What type of nuts and seeds are good to eat? Are regular peanuts or cashews not good to eat? Peanuts are bad. Cashews are okay. A cashews, pistachios, walnuts are probably the granddaddy of them all. Macadamia nuts are right behind walnuts. Uh, those are all great. If you're going to eat seeds, uh, make sure they're whole and raw seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Um, those are okay. Uh, again, once they're ground and turned into an oil, the oil oxidizes very quickly. So, um, yeah, so all nuts and seeds except for peanuts, which are not, pe which are not nuts, by the way. They're legumes, so. Um, what to do about recurring spider veins? 
you got to increase the um, the vascularity of your body. Uh, your body has bioflavonoids in it, and bioflavonoids make your blood vessels strong. So uh, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source are a good start because they're loaded with bioflavonoids. Um, if it's still an issue, there's some other supplements I can recommend for you. Horse chestnut, by the way, is very good for that. If you send me an email, I'll send you a link to the horse chestnut supplement I recommend. It's not one of a Dr. Joe's brands, but I'll tell you the brand that we use. But horse chestnut has been shown to help uh, strengthen the artery walls as well. And lastly, and probably my favorite for the day, should I just stick to fruits and vegetables? No. <laughs> You'll die. <laughs> um, it's not a good idea to just eat fruits and vegetables because it's, you want to eat a good variety of foods. Uh, quinoa is fine. You could do things like quinoa, mill uh, millet uh, is fine. Um, yeah, so you want to shake it up. And so go to my website, drjoe.com, and type in, so what can I eat? I think you'll get some good information there. And I'll sneak one in to ask, uh, almonds, yay or nay? Yay. Good. All right. If you're just tuning in, folks, uh, if you're listening live, put in hashtag live if you would for me. If you, if you um, are listening uh, on a replay, put in hashtag replay. Follow me on all social media platforms, at Dr. Joe Esposito. That's a gift to me, so I appreciate that. This way, it's give and take, the yin and the yang. you got to do me a favor. So uh, do that, and I will see you probably next week. <laughs>